Hmm, nice badge. Keep an eye on the elevator. I'm, I'm gonna go wait for forensics. Okay. Let me know when oh, they get here. Oh, excuse me. Message from the sheriff. Prince asked more for five reports. If I can't bring back their author, I must bring back the reports at least. I'll know them when I see them. That's not a good sign. Special Agent Smith. The FBI! Finally, some backup! Lieutenant's expecting you. Straight ahead. Watch out for the bloodstains. Forensics hasn't been through here yet. Got it. The victim lost a lot of blood. Lieutenant Anderson, I'm in charge of the investigation. Special Agent Smith, FBI. Really? Smith? Is that some kind of joke? No, why? Uh, let it go. Never mind. I'll give you the DL. We got a call from the caretaker around 2.15. He told us that one of his residents was brought in with an injury carried by his bodyguards. We sent a squad car that got here around 2.45. Is the caretaker still here? He's in the living room. But I don't think you'll be able to get anything useful out of him. Poor guy's in shock. Who was the first person on the scene? That would be Baker. He's somewhere around here. It shouldn't be hard to find him. Okay, then what? When they stepped inside, the guys came face to face with that. Do we know who the victim is? Yeah, he had his ID on him. It's the owner, a guy named Jason Moore. I don't know who this guy pissed off, but things didn't work out too well for him. Did you secure all the exits and entrances to the building? Yes, we've got men on the ground floor and in the parking garage. How do you get to the parking garage? You'll have to ask the caretaker. He's the one who took my men down there. Do we know if he had a family? Yeah, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. The wife, Lydia Moore, 34 years old, architect, dual citizen of Costa Rica and the US, no criminal record. Yeah, we're trying to get a hold of her. The daughter, June, we've looked and she's not here either. What have you got on Moore? He was an asset manager. But if you ask me, he was involved in some shady stuff that we're sure to find out about. It's not every day that an accountant gets his head chopped off. Where are the bodyguards? We haven't found anyone yet. Go on. We're still looking for the head. We're waiting on forensics for everything else, but they're busy with another case. What case? You haven't heard? At one international place. They say it was a real bloodbath. So, you're here to take over the case? No, no. I'm working on something else. Moore's name popped up in one of our investigations. But I can't talk about it. Okay, I'll let my team know.
Agent Smith from the FBI is here. We're still in charge of the investigation, so please cooperate with him. There's a retainer here somewhere. Moore's driver's license. He was decapitated. It was a pretty clean cut. A signet ring with a beaver on it. More went to MIT. Bullet wound in the right hip. My ship ended up at the bottom of the sea as well, like my other lives. This sort of formal decor might impress Boston High Society, but not me. Come on. It'll pass. Don't worry. Are you all right? Yeah, just a little faint. I was expecting it, but then... Uh, give me a minute, and I'll, I'll head back. The sight of blood. We've all been there, haven't we? No. You'll need to ask the concierge how to get to the parking garage. He's the one who sent my colleagues down. When I knew him, he took better care of himself. What's going on with him? There are bloody prints on these bags. There are blood stains on the garbage chute. Oh, there are blood stains on the garbage chute. Who'd leave that lying around? Did you find anything? Still looking. Dinner of a mortal who's at the end of their rope.
looks like Lydia's planner. Lydia's life seems to revolve around June and her home in Costa Rica, with Jason often absent. Why is the FBI interested in more? His name came up in several financial investigations we're working on. Hmm. The apartment has changed since my last visit. Jason, Lydia, and June. The little family all together. And in large format. His MIT class ring. Right where you can't miss it. The same one I saw on the body. <laughs> June. Who looks more like Jason than Lydia. Jason. Proud of his family and his success. Lydia, radiant and beaming. Oh my God. I have to question him. He's still freaked out. I don't think it's the right time. Mr. Adams? No. This can't be happening. What a nightmare. So much blood. I've got a few questions. I tried to help him. I told him we should call 911. I told him. Sir, listen to me. It's all right. Calm down. You're safe, and you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I need you to answer a few questions for me. I... I... <sighs> yes, of course. What do you want to know? Did you know Mr. Moore well? We weren't friends, if that's what you're asking. But we got to know each other. With time. <laughs> he was a creature of habit. Since he worked late, he would often ask me for things at night. A uh, newspaper, batteries, ice. I, I think he asked me for just about everything. I prided myself on always being able to get what he needed, no matter what time it was. You'd have thought he pretty much lived after dark. Like his clients. Did Mr. Moore have many visitors? For a man with his status, it was nothing surprising. But, well... Yes? His visitors mostly came in the middle of the night. I must admit, that's a little unusual. That's what working for us is like. He told me he had a lot of foreign clients, and he had to juggle different time zones. That's what working from home is like. He had colleagues over for late night meetings, too. <laughs> but since little June was born, not as many people came around. That was wise. Did he have any enemies that you were aware of? No. He was a very respectable man. No bad company or anything. Except for us. Without any disrespect to the deceased, were you aware of any extramarital affairs he may have had? Mr. Moore was a good man. He would never have disrespected his wife, or even contemplated it, I'm sure. She could have been okay with it. 
There were no young women coming and going? That's a very inappropriate question. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Do you know his wife? Mrs. Moore is a model resident. She always has something nice to say to the staff. And is the first to welcome new neighbors, too. A true lady. Do you know where she is? Mr. Moore told me she'd gone to their home in Costa Rica. She goes there pretty often. <laughs> She's an architect, and she likes to work in her home country. She has family there. Do you think anyone could have been so angry with her that they could have taken it out on her husband? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's true that lots of people could have been jealous of her. But not to that point. Do you think she could have been having an affair? She's a very respectable woman who loves her husband very much. I don't know what sick kind of world you live in. And you would certainly not like to find out. They had their ups and downs, just like any couple. The staff had noticed that she went to Costa Rica fairly often without her husband. Was she thinking of leaving him? Not at all. Just the opposite. She begged him to spend more time with her and their daughter. I imagine the girl left with her mother? Not at all. It was the start of the school year, and Mrs. Moore left two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since Monday, when Mr. Moore took her to school on the first day. She must be staying with a friend. I... poor little thing. Thank heaven she wasn't here. Do you know his bodyguards? Yeah, there's uh, Jack, uh, James, and Wu. But you won't hear me singing their praises. Why not? Oh, they're good at strutting around and acting tough when everything is going well. But where were they tonight? Can you tell me that? That was their job, right? They were paid to... to protect him. Do you have any idea where they might have gone? No. But believe you me, if I ever see them again, I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind. Tell me about the evening again, please. What happened tonight? <sighs> Mr. Moore left with his, his three bodyguards uh, earlier in the evening. One of them got in the car, and Mr. Moore came down around midnight. And then? They came back around 2 a.m. Uh, Mr. Moore was limping. He, he was leaning on one of his bodyguards, and he, he was bleeding. Was he injured? I told him I could call an ambulance or a doctor, but he didn't answer. I went closer to insist, but Wu told me they were in control of the situation, that it was no big deal. They went upstairs, and I saw drops of blood in front of the elevator. I told myself they were being unreasonable. What did those two goons know about it? So I called Mr. Moore on the internal line, several times. Did he pick up? Not once. So I went upstairs and rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. So I went back down to the front desk, and I called you. The lieutenant told me there was an access to the basement. Yes, using the service elevator through the kitchen. 
You need a magnetic pass to, to use it. I gave the spare to your colleagues who wanted to go down there. I still have the original. Do you want it? Please. Thank you for your statement. You have to find out who did this, officer. Justice needs to be done for him. <laughs> and for his family. And we need to find out who's messing with us. That's what we're here for. You can count on us. Stick around in case we have more questions. Huh, you managed to calm him down. I thought that would be impossible. Yes, and he was able to answer a few questions. You can see the tower where the reunification party took place. I should be there. Somebody slept here. What a mess. Nobody's done the cleaning in ages. jungle in the heart of Boston, a truly peaceful oasis. Why were you looking for peace, Jason? I warned you, Jason. God, did I warn you. We destroy all that we touch. They wanted to bring a little vacation back home. It seems like gardening is a real passion for Lydia. Not sure Jason shares your enthusiasm. Moore's ambition could have made him one of our own. Instead, we made him our slave. Ugh, 
What a mess. A fortress security catalog. They install highly secure rooms. Have you found anything? I'm going through the financial records. Moore managed the accounts for a lot of big names in Boston. Here, take a look for yourself. Anything worth noting? Honestly, I don't know. It's not my field. We'll have to take it to the Financial Crimes Unit to see what they make of it. Get in touch if you find something. All right. Find anything? Nothing of interest. Get in touch if you find something. All right. The ghoul who was searching here was looking for something specific. Nobody told me there would be a retainer here. Hurry up. We need something, guys. I'll finish here, and I'm on my way. What are you playing at? Oh, I... I beg your pardon? Don't mess with me. Who are you? Calm down, Mr. Bazori. I meant no disrespect. I work for the Council. Why would the Council have sent her without warning me? Most of the time, they send me to clean up. Are you behind this? No. I got here after it happened. Let's see how much she knows. All right. What have you found? Oh, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm not really allowed to talk about my missions. I don't have time for this. Give me what you have. Uh, what I've got. Of course, sir. Here. That's everything. You made the right choice. Tell me exactly what they asked you to do. I got a message at 2.20 telling me to go to this address. I was supposed to pick up more and some financial documents. After that, I was supposed to wait for further instructions. Read the message you received. 
I don't have that phone with me. Too risky. Well? I hope I'm not going to have any trouble. Do what you have to do. I'll talk to the prince about it later. Very well, Mr. Bazori. Account statements from different banks. Nothing that concerns us. Boston manufacturer's files. The mayor's deeds. Portfolios of old shares. This is where I met Moore for the first time. Human logic is beyond me. What's the point in doing that? Souvenir from the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Son of a bitch wasn't messing around. Have you seen all that cash? safe. Now we just have to find the code. Lydia and June at the beach. Lydia and June at the beach.
Lydia and June at the beach. Lydia and June at the beach. I should put some money on that. It was my greatest pleasure before. Now everything tastes like ashes. Officer Baker, can I help you? Were you the first person to arrive at the scene of the crime? Yes, sir. My partner and I were the first to get here. Just tell me about it. We got the call around 2.20. The caretaker had called because a resident was injured. It took us about 20 minutes to get here. The poor guy was in a panic. He told us he'd seen one of the tenants, Jason Moore, enter the building, and he looked hurt. He was being held up by his two bodyguards, and he was bleeding a lot. Did he see the wound? Yeah, he said the victim was holding his right hip. So I went upstairs with the caretaker. We saw blood in the elevator and on the landing. I rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. So the caretaker opened the door. I identified myself. There were traces of blood leading down the hall away from the entrance. And just after that, I uh, found the decapitated body. Did your partner come with you? No, he stayed in the foyer to secure the entrance to the building. Did you touch the body? No, there was nothing I could do to help him. So I uh, secured the scene. I put my gloves on to take his ID out of his jacket pocket so we could identify him. Then I called it in. Where was the caretaker during that time? I told him not to come inside, but he followed me. When he saw the corpse, he was really shaken. He wouldn't let go of me. Then what did you do? I called for backup. They told me that forensics would get here as soon as they could. They were out at another case. That was their top priority. After that? I secured the entrance to the apartment. After that, I searched the ground floor. There was nobody around. But from the looks of things, somebody searched the apartment. 
and Sergeant Lehane got here, she took care of upstairs. It's a good thing, too, because it took everyone else another 15 minutes to get here. She didn't find anyone there. So there's no sign of the family, then? Nothing. The place is empty. If you remember anything else, let me know. Of course. I should put some money on that. Jean, are you making plans in case things go south? Or are you planning to leave us? Dijon, are you making plans in case things go south? Or are you planning to leave us? I understand better now. The Prince asked more for a complete report on the members of the Primogen. An auction. Acquisition of Lot 87. Dejan Siaka. Hmm, a trumpet belonging to Don Ellis. A drafting table. Hm. That must be Lydia's desk. The blueprints of a house on the west coast of Costa Rica. Pura Vida Extension Project.
this morning for the first day of school. He surprised me, and I'm coming to see you tonight. Don't tell Abuelita, it'll be a surprise to her. And Dad's coming too. I can't wait to get there. XOXOXOXO. <laughs> Damn it, Lydia. I can't do it without you. If... If you could just see June... I can't tell anyone. I'm not gonna make it. I need... I'm sorry. I apologize for everything. I should have left. The three of us should have gone. Stayed at Pura Vida the way you wanted. I'm so sorry for what they did to you. I'll always love you, Lydia. Forgive me. Forgive me. My sire always said that at a prince's court, like in a game of chess, you must know when to sacrifice your pawns. There. June's whole life in pictures. I'll finish here and I'm on my way. June celebrating her fourth birthday. Jason and June, probably on a beach in Costa Rica. <laughs> June dressed up for Halloween. The diary of an eight-year-old girl, June, Jason's daughter. We're waiting for the forensics. kid. There. 
You must be Smith. Yes. Rickman. Have you found anything? Not yet. This is the girl's room. There's no sign of her. I guess that's a good thing. I'm going to take a look around. Let me know if you find anything. Okay, Smith. A bathroom with a shower and a tub. June's father spoils her. There. Hmm. Did you inherit your mother's artistic talent, June? I've never been in this part of the apartment before. Poems in Lydia's mother tongue. Jason, Lydia, June, in Costa Rica, I think. Someone tossed a bunch of stuff in this bag in a hurry to leave. The concept of a laundry basket seems too abstract for some people. It must have been used to dress a wound. A bottle of disinfectant, obviously handled by someone who was bleeding.
Dad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The man you sent to pick me up from school told me I was going to see Mommy. And I'm so happy. And sorry about yesterday, okay? I'm so happy. Thanks, Dad. You're gonna come join us this time, right? XO, 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 XO. Good evening, Jason. I need you tomorrow night at Nakatomi Plaza. We are getting the family together, and I would like to tell them about our agricultural and food business plan. Round up the numbers and bring them with you. Obviously, this invitation cannot be refused. B. Jason, my cousins didn't show up after all. Stay home if you haven't left, or meet me at Hazel's house if you want. Call me back and tell me where you are. A cell phone. Locked, of course. Lydia was killed. It's not pretty. Can you take a look at the cards, please? Hey, mister. You can't go into the parking garage. It's a crime scene. Agent Smith, FBI. Oh, hi. Officer Norton. Hey, they didn't tell me you were coming down. Got something? Wyatt saw Moore leave at 225. Wyatt? The parking attendant. Part security guard, part valet. Anyway, a car that belonged to the victim left in a hurry. Or at least he thought it was Moore until he found out he got his head cut off. There's skid marks on the ground and uh, signs of a minor accident at the exit. He must have really been in a hurry. Well, I've got a few questions. Where's the witness? Wyatt, he's uh, in the security booth over there. He's super nice. I don't think you'll need to question him again. You mentioned skid marks. Yeah, they're very distinct. They start from his parking space and go all the way to the exit. They clean this place twice a day, so there's no doubt they're fresh. The driver peeled out of here in a hurry. And you said there was an accident near the exit. Yeah, a minor one. Broken headlight, paint marks. He must have had a hard time handling it. Do we know what kind of car it was? Yeah, we called it in. It's the victim's sports car. Wyatt said there's only the sedan left. Did you find anything else? No, that's it. Since we're still waiting for forensics, we gotta be careful. But you know how it is, right? Let me know if you have uh, any other questions. Any news? 
these guys? Still looking. Hilda's planned for everything, even her eventual end. vehicle ran into the wall. Even starving, I wouldn't touch that. Access to the trash is restricted here. <sighs> no, that's impossible. Hello, Mr. Bazori. You must be mistaken. I'm Smith, Agent Smith. Yeah, sure. Do I know you? Everyone knows who you are. Is it just me, or are you pals with all the cops around here? Let's just say I'm pretty... intuitive. You know what I mean. In the years you've been hunting us, you've acquired a hell of a reputation among our kind. I didn't know you would come. I'm not looking for any trouble. I, I... I didn't do anything wrong. I... Just who the hell are you? Me? I, I'm nobody. The name's Wyatt Alvarez. I was embraced five years ago. Mm. A thin blood. I spent years hunting them when Quentin King ruled Boston. Unfortunately for me, the blood of my sire was already weak. So I can still catch glimpses of the sun, but I don't have actual powers. What are you doing here, then? Uh, I thought it was a pretty cushy gig. It leaves me with a lot of spare time, even while I'm on the job. And it also means I can live at night. Do the kindred know you exist? Yeah, yeah. I followed the rules, but the 
Prince told me he never wanted to see me again, so I try not to make waves. I try to help out here and there. I'm hoping someone will notice one day, and I'll be allowed to become a true kindred. That's not very likely, if you ask me. That's not very honorable. What? But I... Stay the way you are. How can you say that? You're like a god to me. Quit dreaming. Immortality is a curse. Believe me. You should enjoy the fact that you can still stand the sunlight. Who created you? His name was Victor. But he died last year. Are you involved in what happened up there? Not at all. I swear. I've got a sweet job here. I'd never risk it. Did you see the bodyguards today? James came by earlier this evening to move Mr. Moore's car. But I haven't seen them since. Anything in particular about Mrs. Moore? Yeah, I see her every once in a while. Sometimes I see her with a girl, coming back from vacation. Sure is good they weren't here tonight. What makes you say that? Well, Mrs. Moore's car. I haven't seen her in the garage for weeks, and she's the one who took the girl to school. Mr. Moore told me they were on vacation, and he was going to go join them soon. What can you tell me about Moore? I saw him a lot. He's the tenant I got to know best because of his working hours. And he was the most generous when it came to maintaining his cars, too. So what happened? I've got no clue. My shift started at 10 p.m., as usual. The sixth floor tenant left around 11. At midnight, one of Mr. Moore's bodyguards came down to get the car. They were going to a party, apparently. I didn't see them come back. Then, around 2.20 or so, one of Mr. Moore's cars went flying out of here. It hit the wall near the exit. Did you recognize the car? Yeah, it was his sports car. The only one like it here. Did you see who was behind the wheel? No, it's got tinted windows. I thought it was Mr. Moore at first. But from what happened upstairs, <laughs> I doubt it now. Hey, were you the one who... You really think if it was me who did it, I'd be standing around here trying to figure out what happened? How do you open the dumpsters in the garbage room? What dumpster? The dump... <laughs> Are you toying with me? No, but the cops already looked. There's nothing there. Open it. Mr. Bazzori, I promise you won't find anything there. And I can't open it anyway. It's for staff only. Why do you want to go through the trash anyway? You sure you want to piss me off, Wyatt? No, no, no. Of course not, Mr. Bazzori. That's not at all what I wanted to do. Listen. We're just going to forget this conversation ever happened. And Excuse me? You didn't just try to corrupt my memories, did you? Oh, no. Uh, I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Missouri. I shouldn't have. I know. How can I make it up to you? You're taking a big risk by messing with someone like me. I'm sure that's not news to you. I know. It's either now or later anyway. Because you're not gonna like what I've been doing in there. I know it. Open it now. Just promise me you won't touch anything. Some of my stuff is in there. Please, don't touch it. I've been sent by the Prince of Boston. Do you really think I owe you anything? 
That's not what I meant. You talk too much. Open the door. Right away. All right. It's open. Wouldn't you rather tell me what you're hiding in there? Well, I cook a little. A guy's got to survive. I don't have to tell you that. I don't make a whole lot of money here. What do you cook? Oh, a little of everything. But I've got all my stuff in there. And there's some pretty rare ingredients. Rare? Yeah. And kind of illegal, too. Such as? In some recipes, well, I use vials of Kindred's blood, for instance. One more thing, boss. Don't call me that. I hope we'll meet again, Mr. Missouri. It's makeshift lab, and it's not meth. Who would want to take that? Empty soda cans. Who would want to take that? Empty soda cans. Rusty cans. A shoe with worn out leather. I wonder what he's cooking with that garbage. Old chicken feet. Rusty cans. <laughs> oh. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Woo. If it was a bodyguard who died in the lobby, where the hell is more? How can I help you, Agent Smith? So, what's it like to be a thin blood? You're curious, aren't you? Usually, you hunt us down without asking any questions. There are rules, Wyatt. Yeah, but... I never asked to be this way. If you look at it that way, I'm innocent. If that means anything to you. Like I said, there are rules. If we don't follow them, there will be chaos. But it's unfair. <sighs> That's the Camarilla for you. You could have gone to the Anarchs if you didn't like our rules. Or we can change things from the inside. We're eternal. We don't know how to change. We were hunted under Quinton King. Look at us now. Things are already starting to change. I hope so, for your sake. So... What's it like to be a thin blood? It sucks. Yeah, I can still go outside during the day, but it's not all it's cracked up to be. 
The descendants just can't understand. Sure, it's nice. More than nice. I've been roaming the night since 1745. Do you have even the slightest idea what that does to you? How it changes you, without even realizing it, without wanting to. It eats at you from the inside. But I'm still not complete. So if I had to choose, I'd rather live at night and be like you. Thin buds are the dregs of society. We're always wondering what's gonna happen to us. You, of all people, should know that. If we want to be like you, even a little bit, we have to come up with potions that have a temporary effect. I found your cook shop. You didn't touch anything, I hope. I take what I want. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's just that... It's taken me years to find some of those things. <laughs> so what? No, no, it's nothing. I hope you found what you were looking for. I went through your trash. So? Are you interested in one of my ingredients? That's not really what I've got a problem with. What? You didn't tell me about the man's head in a plastic bag. W what But what the hell? Is it more? No. That head belonged to one of his bodyguards. I... but... It wasn't me, Mr. Missouri, I swear. I don't know anything about it. Okay, I believe you. Happy to help. Glass bottle taken from the trash. One of the weapons is missing. I've got what I need. Let's go back to the prince. <laughs> 